afternoon. During this time, we continue to pray for peace, comfort, and healing. 2020 has been an unprecedented time in our history of the world, our country, and our school. We face challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as social unrest in our nation. Our first responders, caregivers, healthcare professionals showed great courage and stamina so that others could be safe and get well. We face the fear of the unknown, health risks, the loss of loved ones. The Malloy community lost many. Teacher Mike Harrison, brother Bob Andrews. Some of our students tragically lost parents and grandparents. We are blessed to have the memories of these very special people. May they all rest in peace. In their honor, we begin with a moment of silence. Thank you. On behalf of Principal Penicus, the Maris brothers, our assistant principals, and our dedicated faculty and staff, it is my honor to welcome you to Malloy's 2020 commencement exercises. I'm also pleased to congratulate the very special class of 2020 and your parents on all of your achievements over the past four years. You're part of the Stanner family, and now you're part of Stanner history, not just for four years at Malloy, but for life. We begin today's ceremony with a reflection. We are called. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with thankful hearts for the lessons in and outside the classroom that will carry us ever forward as we graduate from Malloy. We thank you for giving each graduate the talents, abilities, and self-discipline required to move on to college and beyond. May you continue to be inspired by the works and the faith of the Maris Brothers. As we close our 128th year as a Stanner community, we reflect and pray for those generations of Stanners who came before us, and for many brothers and lay faculty whose shoulders we stand upon. We reflect on all those teachers who help us to understand the difference between a calling and a career, the difference between a vocation and a profession, and that the largest gift we can give is a life of service to others. We are called to continue the traditions that the Maris Brothers established in 1892 when St. Anne's Academy opened its doors in New York City. With St. Marcel Champagnat as our inspiration, we are called to live our lives with the virtues of humility, integrity, and morality. We are called to express gratitude to all of those who helped and will continue to help us on our journey into adulthood, particularly our parents who have sacrificed so much so that we can experience an education at Malloy. We are called to value what matters in life, friendship, family, and community spirit. We are called to be agents of justice and fairness and enemies of injustice and oppression. And we end this reflection as we do all things. St. Marcel and Chapagnat, pray for us. Good St. Anne, pray for us. Mary, our good mother, pray for us. And as always, let us remember to pray for each other. And now I have the pleasure of introducing your classmates who will lead us in the national anthem. Please welcome Susan Jacob and Erin Bardenborough. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there 
afternoon, administration, faculty, family, friends, and the class of 2020. Adaptation, the act or process of changing to fit one's environment. Remember, it's that topic we learned in biology on Darwin and those finches. Adaptation, a crucial factor in our lives when normalcy, the concept we subconsciously rely on when we picture our future, fails us. We live in a world that's erratic, where nothing is guaranteed. Unlike the normalcy we experienced for most of our four years at Malloy, getting detention if you pass the lines in without a lanyard, or hearing go Stanners at the end of every morning announcement. The normalcy we used to picture our future with didn't consist of going to school online, wearing a mask when in public, or even sitting on the couch with your parents staring at me on a screen to graduate. But this is the reality we have faced the last few months and the future we need to adapt to. I say all this not to sound like a pessimistic realist, but due to what we are experiencing, you all deserve a speech void of fabrication. And because I want what I tell you next to be taken as an unhyperbolized statement. In the world we live in, the future we experience will never be the future we planned. However, the past we experienced has molded us to be able to adapt to changes in normalcy we will face. In the fall of this year, our future seemed as though it was already paved. We all convinced ourselves that the treacherous beginning of senior year that consisted of banging our heads against the wall we called college applications would be alleviated by a carefree second half of the school year. The future promised us was that of endless memories from tr senior trips, spirit week prom, and even graduation. Well, never have I heard the universe say, psych, louder. The memories of the last couple months from senior year instead consist of many Zoom calls, birthday drive-bys, and Joe Exotic, Tiger King. It definitely was not the future we had planned, to say the least. However, because of our four years at Malloy, we already knew the art of acclimation. Freshman year, we conquered new experiences and opportunities, learning to study a lot more than in middle school, play 2048 on the iPad without looking suspicious, and be ready for anything when playing Rodgeball. Sophomore year followed, where we became more steady on our own two feet. Then junior year, or what I like to call high school's era of the Great Depression, brought upon by standardized tests. And finally, senior year, where the unpredictable occurred, changing our plans completely. But what we were ready to encounter due to those three prior years. Ever since we were freshmen, we were the class of 2020, the best year. It's painfully ironic the year 2020 did not give us the 2020 vision to see into how the pandemic would completely blindside us, turning senior year upside down. However, regardless of how our senior year's future came into fruition, it is now a part of our lives that has had a tremendous impact on us and our perspectives of the future. These past few months taught us not only about ourselves, but about the ne our necessity to be with others. It taught us how much better our daily lives are because of the people who are around us. Think about a memory from the last four years. Maybe it's your team celebration after a hard fought win or the glance of relief you shared with a classmate after you didn't fail that calculus test, or even the eruption of laughter your friends shared practically every day. Think about that memory, and then think about the people who made it so important to evoke. That's what we learned to miss those last couple months. Now think about another memory, but this time one from when you were home during quarantine. Maybe this time it's your family celebrating after you got into your college, or even your little sibling barging in your room when you were trying to take an AP exam. Those are the people we've learned 
will not always be right next to us, but will continue to support us no matter the distance. The people in our lives are the constant that provide normalcy, even when the world around us has completely changed. They are the ones that enable us to adapt to situations without losing who we are. It's unsettling to think high school is now a part of our past, but that now means it defines some part of who we are, giving us the means to address the future. The class and year of 2020 has and will continue to have an impact on you throughout the rest of your life. Just to remind you of the powerful influence our grade has had on each other and the school, I would like to recall some of our best moments. Our respectively bad ranking during Spirit Week, the infamous shushing during lunch that got us kicked out of the cafeteria, the entire Thanksgiving feast that occurred, the burst of noise that arose every time Miss Murdaco went on the microphone, and last, but certainly not least, the random items of food that never failed to go airborne across the cafeteria. That I am proud to say, on behalf of my fellow graduates, occurred without arising any suspicion. The class of 2020, as you could probably tell from what I just told you, has so much potential. We were born in the aftermath of 9-11 and are graduating during a pandemic. So it goes without saying that we've adapted to excel in unordinary times. No, we will not be walking across the stage as our classmates watch, but that does not make our graduation any less significant than years past. And on top of that, we may have now avoided getting yelled at by our mothers to put on the cap for a photo op with our friends. Now it's on to the next phase in our lives, college. Just like the last couple months of senior year, college will not present itself the same way we always pictured due to the circumstances we are now in. But it will be another memorable experience, which will further shape who we are. The only thing we know about our future is that we can't be sure of what it holds. Nevertheless, it's the past that has taught us how to adapt and defines who we are at this moment, guiding us as we approach the unknown. From the past, we take with us those experiences we've had and lessons we've learned. The past has allowed us to create our own normalcy through our personal growth over the last four years, the people around us who give their support, and the ability to have fun along the way. Fellow graduates, congratulations. I would like to wish you all the best as you embark on the next stage of your life. And thank you for contributing to the past that helps us to be who we are. Remember class of 2020, let the world not just see us as a class that missed our moment, but because we've learned to adapt, be the ones forever creating better moments for the world. Thank you. Jason Akas, Miriam Ahmad, Hannah Alcotas, Ariana Alfonso, Sabrina Amadio, Kanjit Amaha, John Amore, Jamie Orocho Kelly, Kanafa Asakara, Jolene Elizabeth Iroso, Ethan Balagat, Sean Alexis Balayon, Gianfranco Banca, Anna Barrera, Matisse Barrera, Gabriela Bartosek, Anjali Basedo, Justin Batista, Carolina Bednarovsky, Dorian Bell, Jahira Baremo, Angela Betzios, Jesse Biondo, Bavith Bolugodu, Michael Brown, Waleska Brush Kazal, Martina Berga Alcone, 
Ryan Burke, Michael Kabarkas, Christian Cadet, Kathleen Callaghan, Ashley Kaye, Charles Caminiti, Aidan Campbell, Abdias Carcamo, Christopher Caridi, Isabella Caridi, Kelsey Carr, Samantha Chang, Monona Chapukai, Tanya Chauka, Daniel Chavez, Vanessa Chu, Gabrielle Christian, Michael Cipriani, Julia Clark, Ricky Clark Jr., Emmanuel Clement Seely, Lauren Coleman, Brendan Coppinger, William Corda, Charnier Corey, Renee Crow, Samantha Cullinan, Nicholas Kusumano, Adam Chatorsky, Nicholas DaCosta, Jeremy Dowlett, Liam Davis, Fred De La Quadra, Basiliki Delagos, Brittany Dema, Robert Demo, Malachi Denton, Marco Diodato, Christopher De Pasquale, Christelle Derisme, Michael Devine, Juliana DeVito, Sanjana Dond, Ejitu Diallo, Jack Deluvio, Danielle DiPietro, Paul Descala, Mia Dolan, Ethan Dominguez, Rebecca Donowski, Olivia Dereste, Malika Doshi, Damien Drapal, Aaron Dugan, Caroline Duggan, John Duggan, Samuel Duguay, Anna Dulberg, Elizabeth Duran, Dominique Echevare, Henry Eckert, Valerie Eisenbach, Gabrielle Hervez, Maristel Espanol, Anna Feiner, Isabella Falcao, Benjamin Fatola, Caroline Favelson, Maria Fawcett, Sarah Fedragoni, Josiah Felix, Hando Fernandez, Sophia Fernandez, Anna Ferron, Nina Fejitakis, Andrew Flores, Vivian Fong, Michael Galarza, James Galado Budion, Sophia Gambina, Giancarlo Garcia, Johnny Gaston, Brandon Gauntlet, Peter Gale, Alexander Galos, Georgiana Galos, Sebastian Germosen, Wilson Gill, Tyler Gomes, Emily Gonzalez, Isaiah Grant, Julia Gravania, John Guaman, Fernando Gumarez, Isaiah Gutierrez, John Gutierrez, Thomas Haggerty, Clara Hakim, Michael Hanakis, Ryan Handley, 
Connor Hastings, Kamal Hawthorne, Justin Hernandez, Sophia Herring, Guillaume Olant, Dylan Hussein, Michael Hubert, Tyler Hui, Isadora Inkion, Susan Jacob, William Jacome, Veronica James, Sarah Jones, Brandon Condi, Ilana Karmazinas, Alexander Karnovitz, Ishvir Kaur, Nordeep Kaur, Iman Kelly, Christopher Killen, Si Young Kim, Haley Kermeyer, Kevin Klar, Agnieszka Kowalczyk, Kayla Kumar, Vishu Kumar, Krista Labida, Skylar Laboy, Emmett Lally, Gabriella Lally, Eleanor Langowski, Grace Lanzetta, Thomas Lapinta, Matthew Lawson, James Ligas, Michael Light, Jessica Lim, Stephen Linden, Rosario Loguesio, Sadie Lozano Mieles, Jolie Lu, Gabriella Lugo, Ni nee Lee, Michael Macchia, Montserrat Macia, James Maximin, Gemma Maxino, Danielle Malinch, Aaron Mardenborough, Thomas Marin, Patty Sierra Marino, John Martin, Kayla Mata Prasad, Olga Marvidis, Michael May, Juliana Mayor, Christopher Mazza, Jillian McCabe, Charles McFadden, Elizabeth McGrade. Sean McNally, Mary Mead, Peter Meehan, Allison Mendoza, Jessica Marino, Lucas Mezik, Adam Maselli, Giovanni Maselli, Michael Milavoy, Ani Mila. Alyssa Malone, Harris Mirza, Gianna Modica, Dominic Motsluski, Kira Mooney, John Mosley, Thomas Moy, Karina Nataram, Devraj Nath, Traylon Noel, Chantel Nolasco, Michelle Nonelada, Shane O'Brien, Riley O'Connor, Rachel O'Hara, Caitlin O'Neill, Tara O'Reilly, Rabande Olusesi, Ferris O'Merajik, Althea Onifo, Justin Ortiz, John Ostling IV, Jonathan Overton, Kushali Oza, Demetrius Papa Zahario, Anastasios Papa Zoglu, Liana Papia, Disha Patel, Shiv Patel, Luis Paula, 
James Perkins, Laura Perrin, Andrew Persaud, Ashlyn Persaud, Caitlin Persaud, Nicholas Pesa, Travis Pham, Anthony Picciano, Alfredo Piedra, Isabella Pimienta, Natalia Piotrowski, Amparo Potenza, Ashante Powell, Kiana Powell, Maggie Proko, Genevieve Puglisi, Daniel Pritt, Sebastian Quiseno, Alex Quinteros, Allison Gale Quintilian, Jada Rakatu, Tudor Radu, Daniel Ramirez Mendez, Samia Ramjan, Andy Ratila, Shade Reed, Barry Riley, Ashley Requijo, Caitlin Reyes, Tyler Rico, Amanda Rios, Joseph Risitano, Jade Rivera, Matthew Rivera, Fiona Roche, Anthony Rogers, Brandon Roldan, Jamie Romero, John Romero, Diana Rukaj, Justin Rusick, Joseph Russo, Taylor Russo, Sandro Saba, Sebastian Sabogal, Kenan Sadiq, Asa Samuel, Alicia Sana, Matthew Sanchez, Hannah Santana, Angie Santos, Giovanni Sarkis, Catherine Savastano, Patrick Sabano, Krista Shemitz, Alexandra Serves, Gregory Sharma, Julissa Sierra, Fiona Simone, Danica Sindo, Angelica Singh, Brandon Singh, Daniela Singh, Gurprasad Singh, Inderpreet Singh, Jeremy Singh, Manveer Singh, Sandaya Singh, Kiernan Smith, Hennessy Soto, Sabina Staub, Xavier Stewart, Charles Stravalli, Lara Strumpf, Elizabeth Sullivan, Robert Sullivan, Jillian Sumsky, Simon Sveck, Sierra Sweeney, Joseph Tomorrow, Jason Tandrian, Demetrius Teague, Ava Texa, Jake Temkin, Madison Teta, Irene Theotoridis, Miles Thompson, Margaret Timothy, Karina Teneo, Maria Tochimani, Alexander Toe, Gabriella Troya, Joseph Tulo, Jocelyn Aruchima, Nicholas Vargas, Cynthia Velasquez, Matthew Velke, David Vercellis, Luca Vertucci, Camille Villapaz, 
Matthew Villegas, Jomara Voltis, Jade Wallace, Isabella Warren, Nicholas Webb, Kaya Withanakchi, Kaylee Wong, Kenneth Wong, Emma Resch, Brandon Ray Yu, Matthew Yuen, Jeremy Blair Yazone, Cynthia Zachariah. Good afternoon, Mr. Carson, Dr. Penicus, administration, faculty, family, friends, and my fellow classmates. Since we were born, we have all felt the weight of expectations. Parents expect us to be just like them, teachers expect us to understand every lesson, society expects us to maintain the status quo. The worst thing about some expectations is that they breed feelings of unworthiness and disappointment. When the bar is set too high, we can't help but fall short. Often, we don't even come close. As much as we try to plan our lives in intricate detail, life is unpredictable. I want you to think back to September of 2016. You were 13 or 14, probably a foot shorter than you are now. You were anxious. 50% nervous, 50% excited, 100% unsure. You took a breath and walked through the cafeteria doors. What were your plans then? Some of us wanted a fresh start. Others clung to the blissful nostalgia of elementary school. Some dreamt of acing all their classes, while others were terrified of falling behind. Some of you knew exactly what career you wanted. Others didn't even want to think about it. Looking back now, most of us can laugh at our naivety. While some of our goals have been fulfilled, the vast majority of them have changed. We've kept old friends and gained new ones, but we've also lost a few. We've made the team and passed the class, but we've also flunked the test. We've stuck to a plan of action for months or even years just to end up changing our minds anyway. No matter how hard we work, we are people, and people fail sometimes. At these low points, we are our most vulnerable, our most impressionable, our most human. When we've hit rock bottom, what we crave is companionship. We find compassion and encouragement from a teacher, a smile from a parent, a hug from a friend. People change people. After overcoming their own suffering, our loved ones lift us up, inspiring us to keep going. Life does not bend to anyone's will. Only God is in control. When it becomes too much to bear, all we can do is lean on Him and on those who understand our feelings. They will give us the warmth and wisdom to persevere. Take this moment to thank those who have pushed you to continue, silently or verbally. Those who raised us, encouraged us, helped us along. Thank you to our families, friends, and faculty for sacrificing so much, for giving and not taking for never ceasing to cheer us on. It is when we're at the bottom of the mountain that we learn who we are and who loves us for being who we are. And once we learn that, we begin to rise up again, climbing faster than before. And yet, sometimes, these beautiful turning points in our lives are deemed failures, embarrassing scars from our past. But those times in our lives where we stepped off the carefully crafted path actually helped us find ourselves. It is heartbreaking to try your best and still not accomplish what you expected of yourself, simply because of things you cannot control, time, lack of understanding, or maybe even a worldwide pandemic. Despite our best efforts, life doesn't always go according to plan. And so this pressure to be perfect that others have placed on us, that we have placed on ourselves, doesn't really make any sense. When we miss the target of perfection and instead fall far from it, it actually ends pretty well. Those of us with new friends, haven't we found our people? Those of us who didn't make the play or the team and instead tried a new club, didn't we have fun? Those of us who were rejected by our dream university, aren't we still excited for college? Yes, life is unexpected, but from this mystery, beauty blooms. The freshmen I spoke of earlier, the ones who were scared and wished to go back to middle school, I was one of them. In ninth grade, I joined maybe one club. I made a couple of friends, but mostly clung to those I already knew. I expected just to tolerate my high school, 
and predicted that all I would get out of it was a good education. I never envisioned a shortened senior year, a missed class trip, a virtual graduation. However, it was also not within my expectations to meet some of my best friends, to give a speech at this podium with one of my closest friends, or to make euphoric memories that will last me a lifetime. That path that we've paved for ourselves, it's more like a tangled series of tight ropes. Sometimes we fall, but our net is woven by those closest to us. And when we get back up, we get to change direction. We charge or sometimes stumble forward, trying our best to stay balanced, risking a system of trial and error. It is only through this, through trying and failing and restarting, that we carve a future for ourselves. 2020 has been a tough year. Here we are at the bottom of the mountain. We can't control what is thrown at us, the good or the bad. But we can strive to accept life for what it is, messy and imperfect and wonderful. It isn't always what we or others might expect, but that's okay. The future has a way of being more beautiful, amazing, and joyful than we ever could have planned. It's time to let go of the expectations, embrace the failures, and look ahead to the next path we will travel upon. We will stumble and question and change direction. That is living. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Now it's time to rise up and continue to climb. Thank you. Good afternoon. The gold medal for outstanding scholastic achievement given to the member of the graduating class who's been outstanding in academic achievement over a four year period is awarded to Haley Kermeyer. The silver medal for outstanding scholastic achievement over a four year period is awarded to Krista Schemitz. The Dr. Robert Englert Gold Medal for Excellence in Religion over a four year period is awarded to Kelsey Carr. A silver medal for excellence in religion is awarded to Nee Lee. The Mary Pat Gannon Gold Medal for Excellence in English over a four year period is awarded to Sadie Lozano Mielis. A silver medal for excellence in English is awarded to two students, Kelsey Carr and Nicholas Cusimano. The Brother Lucian A. Sutton Gold Medal for Excellence in Social Studies over a four year period is awarded to Michael Hubert. A silver medal for excellence in social studies is awarded to Tyler Rico. The brother Terrence Jones gold medal for excellence in mathematics over a four year period is awarded to Haley Kermeyer. A silver medal for excellence in mathematics is awarded to Krista Schemitz. The Gold Medal for Excellence in Science over a four-year period is awarded to Haley Kermeyer. A Silver Medal for Excellence in Science is awarded to Nicholas Cusimano. The Gold Medal for Excellence in French over a four-year period is awarded to Alana Karmazinas. A silver medal for excellence in French is awarded to two students, Angelica Singh and Christelle Derisme. The gold medal for excellence in Italian over a four year period is awarded to Haley Kermeyer. A silver medal for excellence in Italian is awarded to two students, Hennessy Soto and Chantel Nolasco. The William J. Kelly Gold Medal for Excellence in Spanish over a four-year period is awarded to two students, Nina Fijitakis and Isabella Warren. A Silver Medal for Excellence in Spanish is awarded to Sophia Herring. The John V. DiOrio Award for Excellence in Government and Politics presented for outstanding accomplishment in this field is awarded to Jamie Orocho Kelly. 
Academic Excellence Awards are presented to the following students. Jolene Elizabeth Iroso, Kelsey Carr, Nicholas Cusamano, Sarah Fredragoni, Julia Gravagna, Michael Hubert, Veronica James, Haley Kermeyer, Sadie Lozano Mieles, Ni Lee, Olga Mavridis, Shane O'Brien, Natalia Petrowski, Krista Shemitz, Hennessy Soto, Elizabeth Sullivan. The Lewis E. Willett Award given to the senior whose regard for and assistance to others befits the memory of a Malloy alumnus who gave his life while serving the country is awarded to two students, Michael May and Charles McFadden. The Archbishop Malloy Alumni Medal in honor of brother Joseph Angus Wilkinson is given to the senior who has been outstanding in qualities of character, success in studies, and school spirit over a four-year period. It is awarded to Elizabeth Sullivan. Congratulations to all the award winners and to all the members of the class of 2020. Good afternoon. Before I address the graduates, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge several members of our, of our faculty and administration who are retiring this year. Mr. Anthony Sotosanti. Over multiple decades, Mr. Sotosanti brought his passion and love for both the Italian culture and language to his classroom every day. From chaperoning and organizing both day and overseas trips to teaching students about culture, food, and history of both the language and the culture, he has made an indelible mark on many, many lives. His warm chow in the morning made students and colleagues feel at ease, and his commitment to the craft of teaching provided students with both an understanding and appreciation of the language. Mr. Charlie McKenna. Mr. McKenna has also spent multiple decades at Malloy practicing his craft, teaching students the finer points of creating and analyzing the written word. His commitment to helping our students become better writers is evident in the numerous alumni who credit his class and his lessons as a core reason for both their confidence in the writing ability and their ability to write and convey their ideas on paper. A testament to his dedication to both English and his students is that a few years ago, I received a letter from the admissions department of an elite college thanking Mr. McKenna for the time and effort he put into a recommendation letter he wrote for a student. Of the thousands of letters received by this college every year, the fact that Mr. McKenna's letter made such an impact is a true reflection of his career at Malloy. Ms. Jean Longerano. It's truly very difficult to contain praise from Ms. Longerano to a few sentences. Over decades as a teacher at Malloy, she has led the way in making mathematics accessible and understandable for thousands of students. She attacked this difficult task with a brilliant combination of compassion and determination. As the chair of the math department, she has encouraged her teachers to make the students the center of the classroom and led a department that has been consistently way ahead of its time in innovation and helping students learn to think like mathematicians. Her tremendous knowledge and superb instructional skill will be deeply missed. Mr. Dennis Vellucci. While Mr. Vellucci has spent the last eight years as an assistant principal, he spent most of his career in the classrooms of Malloy teaching English. His interest in the subject he taught and in teaching that subject to students translated into a level of skill and a record of accomplishment that is truly unique. His most recent work scheduling classes and helping me in a host of ways has allowed our school to offer a great diversity and number of classes to our students. I am truly grateful 
and very humbled to have had the pleasure of working with him directly over the past five years. Ms. Mary Ann Safry. It's hard to o overestimate the impact Ms. Safry has had on Malloy as a school and as an institution. Like Mr. Vellucci, she spent the first decades of her career in the classroom, sharing her love of English and literature with her enthusiastic students. After transitioning into administration, Ms. Safry continued multiple trailblazing efforts, from designing and introducing a new elective about the immigration experience, to leading the way in establishing scholarships, clubs, connections, and events promoting female leadership and empowerment, Ms. Safry's legacy will be forever etched into the foundation of Archbishop Malloy High School. Working side by side with her has been both enlightening and a complete joy. On behalf of the entire Malloy community, I congratulate our retirees and wish them all the best. And now, my fellow administrators, faculty, parents, family members, friends, and class of 2020, on behalf of everyone at Malloy, congratulations. Today, we join all of you in celebrating your accomplishments and welcoming you as the newest members of the Stanner alumni community. Archbishop Malloy, class of 2020, you have experienced a truly unique and incredibly difficult conclusion to your high school career. This was supposed to be a time of celebration, reflection, joy, and tradition. When we left school on March 12th, I never in my wildest dreams thought that the months to follow would be what they were. I am sure you felt the same way. Shock, disbelief, continual disappointment, frustration, and anger are not the emotions that you are supposed to feel during the final months of your high school career. Yet for many of us, these negative emotions have been very characteristic of our experience. There is no question it has been a difficult time for our school and for our country. The death, suffering, and fear that accompanied the pandemic of COVID-19, the social and racial reckoning in the aftermath of the killing of George Floyd, and the continued lack of clarity and unease about what the fall and future will hold have tested us all as individuals and institutions in strong and profound ways. So where do we go from here? We were having a virtual ceremony and an individual diploma distribution. Some of you may know that by now that most or even all of your classes online on the fall will be online. Where can we turn? What should we think? Being Maris and attending a school that is the direct result of the work of St. Marcel and Champagne provides some very good lessons and examples. Marcelin found himself in a world torn apart by war, violence, instability, and unrest. What did he do? He placed his faith in God and worked to make a better future. His past was through, was through education and the evangelization of youth. What will be your path? Some of you will choose medicine, some education, some public service, others art or science. Probably a good percentage of your class doesn't really know what path you will be on. Whatever path you choose, Marcelin's life and faith offer some profound insights. First, Marcelin was a faith-filled disciple of Jesus. He knew that alone, his work would be extremely difficult, if not impossible. He allowed God into his life and prayed for help, strength, and wisdom. Being open to the presence of God in your life is a gift that will offer you both great strength and comfort. While God may not be mentioned often these days, God is always there. I encourage you to remember this and always look to your faith in good times and in bad. Next, Marcin was an optimist focus on what he could control. Post-revolutionary France was the farthest thing from the stable setting you may think most conducive to the start of, of a worldwide movement. Yet, Marcelin woke up every day and got to work doing what good he could on that day. His commitment and courage led others to look to him as a leader, one they wanted to both emulate and to follow. Every day, you 
have the power and potential to do good. From diligently working on your studies, to advocating for social and racial justice, to being a helping hand or a voice of comfort for those around you, the simple decision every day to do good is enormously impactful. Finally, Marcelin was committed. Today, the buzzword that's often used is grit. Marcelin had grit. Setbacks, threats, vicious attacks, and uncertainty about his future and that of the Marist Institute were all in a day's work for him. Yet, his faith in God and his commitment to being an optimist provided the fuel and constitution necessary to keep working hard every day to make Jesus known and loved. So, what, all, what did all this accomplish? A worldwide network of followers dedicated to providing education, help, and comfort to children and people around the world. I'm pretty sure that Marcelin himself will be quite impressed with the scope, reach, and impact of the Marist Institute. Yes, there will be setbacks. Our recent history with COVID-19 has taught that to us all. Think of them as opportunities to learn and to continue moving forward. The example of St. Marcelin Champagne will indeed serve you well. So, as you conclude your career as students at Malloy and begin your life as Stanner alums, know that you have the knowledge, tools, and values necessary for a full and successful career and life. You bring a great deal to the table, and the world needs your talents, your compassion, and your abilities. Never forget your relationship with God. Be confident in your abilities and driven in your mission. Remember, you will gain the greatest fulfillment and experience the most joy when you work as hard as you can to help someone else. Finally, remember you are always a stanner and always welcome home at Malloy. On behalf of everyone at Archbishop Malloy, I again congratulate you. May God bless you and all of your families. I now ask the graduates to rise at home and in recognition of your successful completion of the full academic program of Archbishop Malloy High School, move your tassels from the right to the left. Congratulations and God bless. Go Stanford.